asked me how the process or what the process is to make a segi. So I thought I'd do a little video just to show you what goes on. First of all, onto the computer and you need a CAD drawing program. And now I'm going to put some little lines on it. Now I've got all the little lines on it, I've got to remove some to tidy the whole thing up. With that done, I'll just put a little tilt on it so you can see what's happening. Now I've got to extrude to however thick I want it. And that goes up 6mm. So now I've got a 3D object. There we go. Then I'll take it into another program to put the lettering and the words on it. Right, we've got it opened up in the second program now, which I find better for putting the words and the numbers on. So I have to import a file, which I've saved, so I don't have to keep doing it every single time. Uh, let's get the word SEGI imported. Takes a second to do it. There it is. Now if I tilt it, you'll be able to see that it's already sticking up. See that? By a couple of millimetres. All I've got to do now is just move it up very slightly. It's not quite in the right position for me, so I'll just move it up a little bit there. That'll do. And then you do the same, you pick um, numbers and letters from over here. There's loads of them, all the whole alphabet, all the numbers you need. And put those on. Then you save that as a file. Then you take it into the program that will go to the printer. Right, now I've got the thing, it has changed colour, it doesn't matter, it's only the program that does that. Now I've got the thing in the program that I'm going to send to the printer. Over here is all the information I have to put in. The thickness, the heat, etc, etc. And um, then I save it to a little SD card. That SD card will then go over to the printer. This is one I've already got on the machine working. It gives you some idea of how slow it is. It's better when it starts the infill like this. But it takes a couple of hours to do one of these, just one. So that's it. Well, that's not quite it. You start off with a spool of PLA filament, 1.75 mil, which goes down into the heated head with a very tiny uh, 0.4 of a mil extruder on it. So you get a very fine piece of plastic coming out the end. All the settings are up here on the screen, and you just let it get on with it basically. It's mesmerising to watch. 
So that's it, a little quick video on how I make these. Um, this PLA is a, what's it called, polylactic acid, and it's made from, I'll just read this, hang on, a mixture of plant-based materials and polymers. It's, the, the way they make it is eco-friendly, it's also biodegradable, so we're not doing nothing too nasty. Um, the reason I've designed it like this is keep the cost down. It's still got the strength of that bar in the middle. But why have this solid? It saves on materials so I can keep the cost to the minimum. So there you go, the Segi. So now you know how they're made, I'll hand you over to me in the workshop and show you what to do with them. Thank you Keith. Right, I've got one here already set up, this one, and I'll just show you the little sledge. This is the little wedgie sledge or seggy sledge. Um, there's loads of these on YouTube, all different designs and what have you. This is just one that I picked up and did my own version of it. Uh, and I've already got it set up. These just slide whichever way on these grooves. Put your seggy in, lock everything up. I've got a stop here. Once that's set, you can take your seggy out. I've got a stop here, just a temporary thing. You slide it up and it'll get back off the blade. Slide it up to whatever length you want your seg segment to be. Switch on, away you go, you've got a perfect angle. The next cut you do, you don't have to turn the wood over, or well you can if you want, but to keep all the grain nice, just go onto that side. Put it up to your stop, away you go. I won't turn it all on, it's just a very quick video this is. <clears throat> okay, you don't have to have a table saw. If you've got a, a chop saw, or radial arm saw, whatever they're called, you can use that. You can just put the seggy to the back of the bed, like so. Bring your blade down, make sure the seggy touches the blade, and get that guard out of the way. Make sure the seggy touches the blade. Lock the blade into position. You can cut your segments out on your chop saw. Easy, isn't it? And because these are all done on computer, and they're exactly the right angle you need, exactly. So that's it. Back to me in the house. Thanks for that, Keith. Now you know how I make and how they're used. The Seggy. Bye now.